as my colleague Chaya Ratanji has said. And let me mention that along with our, her, there are other friends from Hyderabad. We have Abhik Saha from Bengal. We have Lingraj from Odisha. So some of us have come here to express our solidarity. As she mentioned, it is most unfortunate to have this meeting outside the university gate. In the trade union movement, there is a name for this kind of a movement, this kind of a meeting. It's called the gate meeting. Outside the factories, there are gate meetings. Outside universities, you don't have gate meetings. But they want to turn universities into factories. This is how they want to create. Andar ao, kaam karo, degree lo, chup chaap bahar chale jao, sawal mat poochu. This is the attitude. This is what they want to teach. This is the message they want to give. Come in, get your degrees. Don't ask questions. Don't debate. Don't discuss. Don't open your mind to anything other than your examination. This is what we are being told. And we are being told this not just in University of Hyderabad. We are being told this in Jawaharlal Nehru University. This is what's happening at Allahabad University. This is what's happening in Jadavpur University. This is what happened in IFT Pune. This is what's happening all over the country. All over the country, the new regime, the new establishment now wants to send a clear message. No more thinking, no more critical discussions, nothing that can raise a voice of dissent. But all over the country, students are raising their head. A new wave of student unrest is taking place across university campuses. And this always happens in history. When someone tries to suppress, when someone sets all the norms and values aside and wants to just rule with brute force, that is the moment when some of the most beautiful, some of the most truthful voices of that society come out. And what we are witnessing in this university, what we have witnessed in JNU, what we witness in Allahabad, in all other places, these are voices of truth. These are voices that cannot be suppressed. That cannot be suppressed merely with Vice Chancellor's orders. These are voices that cannot be suppressed with police. These are voices that cannot be suppressed by sending a few persons in police custody for a few days. Yeah, let them come. Just think of the impression that these students will carry with them. You know, they would look at this lock, the, day, the gate being closed, some people standing outside. What message does it send to them? A university has a universe in it. Vishwa Vidyalaya is about the entire Vishwa. And why do we call it a university? Because a university is meant to imbibe influences from everywhere, from all over the world. Learning from any part of the world, learning from any century in the world, for any kind of person. But when we try and come into the university, what are we told? I was told by your registrar, sir, politicians are not allowed, media is not allowed, activists are not allowed, people not connected with the university are not allowed. I said, but I am an academic. Your university has invited me so often to give lectures here. I am very sorry, sir. We can't allow you. What they are really saying is, any voice of dissent is not enough. 
This is very unfortunate. Last time when I came here, there was at least a beginning of a sense that perhaps things could come back to normalcy. Classes had begun, new acting vice chancellor had started functioning. Our entire delegation went and met that acting vice chancellor. And it seemed that he was open to sensible reasoning, that he was taking this question seriously. And certain things could be worked out. We gave him suggestions of what are the things that could be done. It seemed the university was coming back to normalcy. What then was the point in bringing the same vice chancellor back? I had said then, and I repeat it today, I do not know Professor Parao. I've had no opportunity of meeting him. And therefore, I may not be able to pass any personal judgment about it. But one thing is clear. We say university is a family. University is a community. And if the vice chancellor is the head of that family, then the head must enjoy trust. Whose trust? The trust of the most vulnerable. That is a test of trust. Whatever may be true about Prof. Saaparao, I do not know about his academic qualifications. I do not know about his other abilities. They must be good. But one thing is sure. He does not enjoy the trust of the most vulnerable student community of the city. And as such, he does not have moral authority to continue as the Vice Chancellor of this university. It would have been very dignified if he had said himself, he has repeatedly said he has done no wrong, but it would have been a great thing if he had said, I have done no wrong, but for whatever reason, students don't trust me, I step down because I request them, and then I would be able to explain to them that I have done no wrong. That would have been great. To come back in a clandestine manner and to rule a university with the help of police force is one of the lowest things that can happen to any academic authority. Same. And that, unfortunately, is what has happened here. So, friends, I just wanted to express on behalf of my colleagues our solidarity with you. I also wanted to say as I said last time, there is no room for violence. There is no room for violence by police. There is no room for counter-violence by anyone in the university. And as someone who has participated in movements, like you, I was in student movement. Like some of you, I was also sent to jail at that time. Let me also give you a practical advice which is any time there is any violence, even the smallest of violence by students, that only strengthens the hands of those who want to crush students' movement. I hope you would remember, this is, I'm not stating only a Gandhian principle, I'm giving you a practical advice. If you want to continue your truthful struggle, be very careful about those. They may be hot-headed, they may be indisciplined, they may be implanted from outside. Be very careful about those who might end up helping the authorities by any form of violence. So friends, at the moment, the university authorities may feel that they have won because they have been able to send students to jail, faculty to jail. At the moment, they might feel they have an upper hand. Doesn't matter. These days will pass. Your struggle has truth with it. And in the last instance, truth shall win. That's all I wanted to say. Wanted to congratulate all of you that in these very difficult times you have continued with this battle, with this struggle, and wanted to tell you that there are so many people outside who may not be able to come like me here physically, 
but all over the country. Last 10 days, I was in three universities of Haryana, Rota, Kurukshetra, and Hisar, and students were talking about Hyderabad. So all over the country, students and the youth are talking about what's happening to Hyderabad. Rohit Bemula is an icon for Indian youth today. Your struggle is giving inspiration to students all over the university. So I would just say, more strength to you. Continue with your truthful struggle. Do not allow anyone to disrupt or to play any games in the most non-violent, truthful manner. If you continue, victory is yours. Thank you very much.